Greetings and welcome to Beneath the Soil. Hi, I'm Simka Weinstein, Director of Marketing at Albert Organics, and today's topic is genetically modified food. Now, genetically modified food is indeed one of the most controversial topics in our agricultural system. Proponents for both sides of the issue feel very strongly, very passionately about this topic. For those of us in the organic and natural foods industry who are advocates against the use of GMOs, it's important, though, that we go beyond the passion and beyond the enthusiasm. Don't get me wrong, those are vital and very, very important. But it's also important that we're armed with information, that we're armed with accurate data. And to that end, today, I'd like to focus on two things. One, what is genetic modification of food? And two, what are the issues and concerns surrounding this topic? So I'd like to begin by taking a look at exactly what is genetically modified food. So simply stated, Genetic modification of food occurs when you take the genes from one species and insert them into the genes of another species. So for example, if you took the genes from an arctic flounder and inserted them into a tomato, you would have a tomato that does very well in cold weather, will go longer into the season, be frost resistant, and therefore give a greater yield. That's the theory behind genetic modification. This is very different than natural breeding. For example, in natural breeding that occurs within nature, you can have tomatoes cross-pollinating with other tomatoes. That's natural breeding. But you don't have tomatoes cross-pollinating with rice. Pigs mate with pigs, but you don't have pigs mating with cows. You don't have unrelated species coming together and that's what genetic modification does. So why do we do this? Well there's basically two arguments that proponents of GMOs use and those arguments are one that we get greater yields and they'll even go as far as to say and therefore it's an opportunity to feed the world. The second argument goes that we will also use fewer pesticides, fewer insecticides, fewer herbicides. Well, if, if this was true, then GMOs would be the next great thing. But it's not. There's many, many questions, many concerns, and many issues surrounding the use of GMOs. And I'd like to now take a look at some of those issues and some of those concerns. So first and foremost among the concerns is safety. Are genetically modified foods safe? Well, in 30 other countries outside the United States, including Japan, Australia, and the entire European Union, genetically modified food production is either heavily restricted or outright banned. And the reason for this is simple. These foods have not been accurately tested and they have not been proven safe. In the United States, the FDA has given approval for genetic modification of food based on studies by the very companies who sell the seeds and who profit from their sale. Until we can get the testing done accurately and fairly, there will always be this cloud of uncertainty surrounding genetic modification of our food. So let's take a look at the claim that genetically modified food production uses less herbicides and less pesticides. Last year, over 70% of the crops that were gen genetically modified were engineered to be herbicide resistant. And what this means is, is that as the farmers apply the chemicals to the fields, to the crops, they can apply a much more liberal dose because they don't have to worry about the chemical actually coming in contact with the crop because it's been engineered to be resistant to that specific herbicide. So what this means is is that they typically are going to apply more 
than a grower who raises non-GMO crops because that grower has to be much more precise in their application of the, the herbicide, of the pesticide. They can't get it on the crop because it will in fact harm the crop or actually even kill the crop. So even though genetic modification of food, even though GM production of food is promoted as using less herbicides and less pesticides, the fact of the matter is that in reality, they actually use more. Another popular claim about genetically engineered food is that it creates the opportunity for us to actually feed the world. And the theory works something like this, that if we splice food with the right gene, that we will even have the capacity to grow crops in the desert. But as many food experts and many agricultural experts will explain, hunger, starvation, the food crisis throughout the world is not an issue of lack of production. The issue is lack of access. In other words, the issue is a social and political issue. Actually, genetically modified crops have been of very little use to growers in poor countries. The biotech companies who make the seeds actually own the rights to the seeds. And what these companies do is they force the farmers who buy these seeds to sign agreements. And as part of these agreements, the growers are not allowed to save the seeds and to replant them from year to year. In other words, each year they must buy their seeds anew. And for most growers, for most of these small farmers in poor countries, the price for this kind of farmer is simply prohibitive and it doesn't work. So an excellent resource for more information about GMOs is the Non-GMO Project website and that can be found at nongmoproject.org. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video and until next time Keep the conversation rolling and be well.